apologies in advance. I kind of just woke up. I was supposed to record this yesterday, but I didn't. I ended up recording uh, another video. Uh, but anyways, today we're going to be talking about... Obviously, if you can't tell by the title, this is going to be a basic movement guide for Brawlhalla. So this is just going to be a, a, a series. Uh, this is just the basic level, then I'm going to do an intermediate level, then an advanced level. But before I do that, just a little quick uh, little key. I'm going to use some terms in this video that you might not understand, and if I do, I apologize. We're going to try to clear up some of those right now. Recovery, I what I mean by recovery is when you press the heavy attack button in the air. This is a recovery. When I say exhausted recovery, or a weak recovery versus a strong recovery, um, what that means is when you use your recovery too many times when trying to come back to the stage, it'll it'll work less and less. Like it'll be less and less effective. As you can see, if I do my recovery here, I clearly go uh, from about this distance to all the way up here. So it's about two jump heights. But as you can see, if I use it, I get almost no height. So that's an exhausted recovery because I already used my recovery. So it's not going to bring me as uh, as up uh, as high as I would like it to be. Gimp. Uh, if you don't know what that means, that means um, when you lose all your jumps due to being attacked off stage. Uh, you mainly see this with um, with Scythe, uh, whether you're a Scythe player or a Scythe uh, um, fighter. Like if if someone's using Scythe against you. Uh, gravity cancel. What a gravity cancel is is when you press neutral dodge, and while you still see that white circle. That's the easiest way to um, know when to, to gravity cancel, when you still see the white circle, because as you can see the white circle wasn't there when I did that, but I managed to do an attack while that uh, white circle was still there. So the way you do it is you do a neutral dodge, and while that white circle is still around you, you press any attack. So you can do any light attack, any type of light attack, you can do this attack, this attack, this attack, or any um heavy attack while in the air by doing that uh technique by gravity canceling it neutral in case you do not know what that means use an attack with no other input or when you press up with an input um you can test this out yourself when you press up and an attack uh, if you don't have tap jump on uh if you press up an attack that'll give you a neutral attack and that's very useful for doing a, a turnaround neutral attack See, as you can see, if I wanted to turn on an attack, I would have to do all this extra uh, turning around. But if I press up, back, and the neutral attack, on the very first frame, I turn around. And I don't have to manually turn around. So that's, that's a very good tool uh, if you want to get um, more direct inputs, if you want to press uh, up uh, whenever you're doing your neutrals. And that's pretty much it for all the turns. So now let's actually get right into the guide. So the first thing that I see um, newer players do is they tend to uh, do what I'm about to do and they move like this. And what's wrong with this is that I'm walking. And the issue with that is it's not the fastest mode of transportation to get the job done. I'm not saying walking is completely useless. Mainly, you should be using the dash button. It's also your dodge. So whatever your dodge button is, is also your dash button. Depending on your character's movement speed, um, so certain characters are faster than the other. Uh, depending on your character's movement speed, they move around the map a lot uh, slower, obviously, and they also move in the air a lot slower. So that can um, really depend on how you play and how uh, you move around the map because if you're playing a slower character, it's going to be harder for you to move around. It doesn't mean don't play a certain character because of their speed, but it does mean just keep that in mind when you're trying to move and kind of uh, make up for that in a way. You can combine moves with the dash to extend the hitbox of it. And the way you do that, um, in this game you can buffer things, meaning you can press them at the exact same time and it'll give you that type of input. So if I were to press the jump button and the attack button, uh, uh, both at the same time, I will get a jumping uh, neutral air. So that, so that can just help with uh, doing shortcuts for some moves. I know a lot of people don't do that. They tend to jump then do it. But that'll obviously be a lot slower than pressing them both at the same time and getting that move on the exact same frame. So just keep that in mind that you can combine button inputs uh, to do things. Like if I dash and do a, uh, a neutral light like that, obviously I'm not going to hit it from here. 
So if I dash and do it, the chances of them reacting to that are very slim. So you can use that to your to your advantage. Not only can you just dash around and move around the stage, but you can also dash into attacks. The way you can practice uh, dashing around the stage, really dashing should be your main form of movement. But overall, the way you can practice moving is on bigger stages uh, like this. And just really just um, moving around it, just dash and getting familiar with pressing that button with your movement. That's really the key is just uh, getting into the habit of pressing that button while you're um, moving around. Not really focusing too much on using it with attacks, but uh, mainly using it to just uh, get around the stage and get familiar with pressing the button with your movement. So obviously being on the wall or off stage is a scary place to, uh, uh, for certain players. So what happens off stage? You have to use up your resources, the resources, as in your jumps and your recovery, and sometimes even your dodge. If you didn't know, you can directional dodge uh, to help you get back to the stage. But the reason why it's so scary is because those are resources that can easily be taken away from you. When you're on stage, it doesn't really matter how many times you get hit, you'll still have a majority of your jumps because you have a floor right below you that you can fall to. When you're off stage, you have to be more mindful of what you're doing which can be scary for newer players because they have to actually keep track of things uh, um, and their jumps uh, which is why it's um, an area that um, some people might uh, try to avoid so just a few basic tips of coming back to the stage is uh, to mix up your approach what this means to mix up is if uh, they are tending to react to your recovery options if you try if you tend to recover the same way and they're starting to uh, punish you for that then maybe sometimes try aiming for the opposite side of the stage so if you like to uh, jump all the way over them and they're punishing you for that then maybe try aiming for the bottom of the stage this time or if it's the opposite they know that you'd like to try to touch the wall maybe try to uh, go over them when they try to go down there to punish you for that either way doing this means that you mixed up your approach because it's not what you usually do in that situation and therefore you're doing something else and it could be that they were not expecting that and that could also help you get back to the stage if you're unaware you can also dodge off the wall as you can see you can dodge off of it so just a little bit of wall movement um, a lot of people tend to die by getting spiked because they're not uh, moving away from it. They're kind of just still holding in towards the stage and the opponent is just uh, like sweeping the wall like this. And because they're just uh, holding in the whole time trying to touch the stage, then they end up dying. But if they're coming down on top of you, if you can react fast enough, and that, that's really what it is, is reaction speed. Um, if you can react fast enough then you can dodge away from them and this can also trail into using um, attacks uh, while you're trying to go to the wall so if I have greatsword one of greatsword's uh, better tools is that it has it can occupy all this space above itself but if someone's uh, hovering around this area when you're trying to come back to the wall you should kind of be able to expect that they're gonna try to spike down because they're hovering this area waiting for you to get in range and they're gonna try to spike you so a way you can combat that is well depending on your weapon uh, you can do an up hit into the air by jumping and holding up or just regular holding uh, up when you're moving to the stage and if you time it right then you can uh, hit them out of that move and that'll also get you back onto the stage you could also throw your weapon uh, depending on your weapon's size, like the great sword has a pretty big hitbox, I can do that, and I can touch the wall, and that'll stop them from spiking me, and I can even go back and pick that up. Or you can uh, just dodge away from them. So if he's gonna come down like that and spike the wall, then I can dodge away and lean back into the wall, depending on how many jumps I have left. But there, there are a lot of options that you can do for people who are trying to um, hit you while you're on the wall. Uh, you don't have to necessarily get hit by it all the time. It's not something that's unavoidable. You just have to know what to do in that situation. Ugh, stretching. So what if you're already on the wall? Obviously, you can't just uh, throw your weapon. 
So the only option that you really have left is to either lean off the wall, if you can lean off the wall fast enough. Uh, a lot of them are very horizontal, but like the hammer one and cannon are very vertical, so it really depends on the weapon. But all of them can be combat combated with uh, an upwards diagonal dodge. So what this means is you can dodge off the wall by pressing the dodge button and the opposite way that um, the wall is. So the way, basically the way your character's back is facing. In this instance, it'll be uh, right. So you can press up, right, and dodge. Hold on, I need to get my dodge back. Uh, I got the stupid fucking wall slip. You can press up and away from the wall in order to dodge upwards. And that'll, that'll beat most vertical and horizontal spikes if you time it well. Obviously, there is timing involved. Offstage movement. Uh, I also f I forgot to say this term in the beginning, but uh, stalling. So what is stalling? Stalling, simply put, is purposefully hovering or staying in one area to prolong the amount of time that you spend in that area. Doing this me jumping around in this area that's stalling because the opponent could be right here waiting for me to touch the wall so that they can uh sweep me off the wall and what i'm doing is i'm purposefully hovering around in this area to kind of uh, keep them waiting for me and make them have to use more resources or have to wait longer for me to get back and that's also a form of mixing up your approach option for example, an easy method to stall when you're coming back to the stage uh, is to use your dodge first. Now this doesn't work all the time, but if I use my dodge first, obviously you know that you can only do one dodge. Why is this wall slip still on me? If I use my dodge first, as you can see... Now as you can see, I just got my dodge back because I used my dodge first and I spaced out my jumps. I was able to get my dodge back within a certain amount of time. So I kept myself out uh, away from the stage in the air long enough for my dodge to come back. And it's a pretty uh, complicated thing to try to incorporate into your game, but it's very useful if you can uh, use it effectively. And it'll also help you get back to the stage because not only do you have um, three resources, but now you have a fourth. So if I go out here, as you can see, I use four different options to get back to the stage instead of the uh, two jumps and the recovery and then the uh, and then the dodge. Uh, however, if you use it too much, uh, then you're you're still using up resources regardless of if you're waiting for those resources to come back. Like if I use my dodge, jump around a little bit, and then dodge again, I'm still using resources. So in the end, I'm still touching the wall with nothing left. If you uh, tend to just go like this a lot when you're off stage, then the opponent can obviously punish you for that. So again, mixing up your uh, approach options. Uh, use stalling uh, occasionally. Don't always use it unless uh, they're hovering around this wall and waiting for you to come back. Then that'd be a good time to use it. But if they're not really pressuring you off stage, like... Uh, there'd be no reason for him to stall if I'm still on the stage right here. But, if I were to go out there after him, then that'd be a good reason for him to stall. So it's really about a uh, situation. A general rule of thumb, uh, when you're hit off stage, and I, I see this happen a lot to new players, um, when you're hit off stage downwards, uh, try to avoid going straight up because what a lot of new players will do is I could even demonstrate this on the bot. What a lot of people will do is they'll instantly jump, and what that can ha and what can happen with that is I can do that because I knew he was going to instantly jump, and I hit him down again. So if you're ever hit off stage, uh, whether it's downwards or uh, even upwards, most of the time it's downwards uh, when people react like this. Um, try not to jump. Like, I was able to do that because his first reaction was to jump. Oh, messed up my input. Oh, messed up my input. Uh, so, like I said, just try not to jump 
or instantly go straight up and it really depends on the situation again a lot of this contradicts itself because of uh, the idea of mixing things up when i say try not to it also means try to do it uh in moderation <laughs> because if the opponent knows that you always like to um jump right after then they're gonna punish you for that but also if you tend not to ever jump then they're gonna know that you never jump after doing that and they're gonna punish you for that too so it's, it's really about mixing it up but most of the time the easiest read uh, is to try to get people who are jumping um, so if you if you know that you get punished a lot for instantly jumping try to mix that up you could even do what's called fast falling um, that's pressing down in the air to make you to make your character fall faster. So as you can see, I fall like that when I don't fast fall. But if I press down, as you can see, I, I zoom straight down. So, oh my god, this wall slip is making me angry. So basically, yeah, just try to mix up the way you come back to the stage after being hit. Um, most of the time, if you dodge uh, after being hit, for example... What I just did to him right there, I knew he was instantly going to jump straight up towards me, so I was able to hit him with a down air. Uh, if that was you in that situation, what you could have done is uh, dodged away, and like I said, um, then just space out your jumps, and you should get your dodge back. So, as you can see, you can use uh, that form of stalling or spacing out your jumps in that situation to help you get away from, uh, from that happening to you. Obviously, that was a controlled situation that's most likely not gonna be how it's used in an actual in-game situation but like i said it really just depends on the in-game situation in order for you to practice these types of um, air maneuvers there's no real way you can practice it in training mode recovering back to the stage depending on the character and the weapon um let's say i was off stage like that and i don't have any jumps how would I have gotten back to stage in that situation? Now, some of you might know, but uh, for those of you who don't, certain weapons do have movement built into them. As you can see, I can do the side air with these gauntlets and it'll move me around. So, if I'm about this distance from the wall and I have nothing, a side air is going to be able to get me back onto the wall. Uh, Onyx, both of her weapons actually you can use uh, the side moves to, to help you move around in the air. As well as cannon. Oh shoot, I'm dead. Cannon can do it, Lance can do it, uh, Gauntlets can do it, Katara's with their down move can kind of do it. Unarmed could even do it with their down air move, it's a lot like the Katara's. Uh, there's a lot of weapons that can do it. Uh, that can help you get back to the stage uh, horizontally if you're uh, too far out. And you can practice this in training mode, just uh, trying to come back with using your moves like that. So, uh, to sum up, how how can you practice all this off stage stuff? Uh, in all honesty, there really is no surefire way to practice this. Uh, if you struggle in these areas, uh, that just means that you have to put yourself in those areas more, regardless of if you lose. Uh, or regardless of if you know that you're going to suck at it. Uh, the best way to get better at, uh, at offstage is to um, just play it more. Other than that, that's going to be pretty much it for this video. So just practice the uh, majority of these tools that I mentioned. And uh, work on your movement uh, while on stage. Try to dash a little bit more when you're moving. So that's going to help you out a little bit. Uh, Try to practice your offstage if you're bad at it uh, in any way. And work on your covering if you're struggling with that. So hopefully you enjoyed. Uh, see you guys in the next one.